So whether it's minimalism that resonates in your version and creating your own definition or simplifying, you know, use it as a vehicle to get to where you want to go in life. And for so many people, Janet, that's freedom. It's freedom. It's freedom from this chokehold of your time, of your headspace. Like I remember coming home after a long day's work and just being like, I have nothing left. Welcome to a Healthy Push podcast. I'm Shannon Jackson, former anxiety sufferer turned adventure mom and anxiety recovery coach. I struggled with anxiety, panic disorder, and agoraphobia for 15 years. And now I help people to push past the stuff that I used to struggle with. Each week, I'll be sharing real and honest conversations along with actionable and practical steps that you can take to help you push past your anxious thoughts, the symptoms, panic, and fears. Welcome. You're right where you're meant to be. All right, today on a Healthy Push podcast, I have Katie with me, and Katie is a minimalist, and she talks all things that I love on this topic, so I am so excited to chat with her. So welcome, Katie, to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Shannon. One big reason I got into teaching people how to simplify their lives and you know declutter their homes is because I used to have really – really bad anxiety. And so when I found your podcast and when I found your channel, I was like, okay, well, we need to connect because simplifying my home was one of the um, you know, biggest things I did um, outside of kind of traditional things to decrease anxiety uh, that really made a huge difference in my mental health. So excited to be here. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited to dive into all of it. And I I knew just from looking at your Instagram that you had struggled with some anxiety, but I can't wait to dive in more into that because that'll resonate with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So how about we just start with who are you? What do you do? (laughs) (laughs) Simple enough. So, uh, you know, first and foremost, I'm a mom. My sons are now five and seven. Um, and like I said, uh, you know, I used to struggle with anxiety, a lot of, um, you know, hindsight 2020, I didn't realize at the time, but I was after my first son was born. So seven years ago, I was having, um, really bad chronic anxiety and, um, didn't know what to do with it. Right. It was every single day I kind of woke up. It felt like groundhog day. I had a lot to be grateful for, you know, I had a healthy son. Um, I had a lot of things to be grateful for, but, And that kind of made the anxiety, made me feel guilty about having anxiety. I don't know if maybe you ever felt that, but it's like, oh, I should be happy. I have all these resources and tools and things available to me, yet I'm still struggling. Maybe that's a whole different conversation. Um, But anyway, really went through early motherhood in this fog, like many, (laughs) many moms do. And um, I, I kind of felt like I really struggled being present. And a big part of that was because we had so much stuff in our house. And so I did what a lot of people do. I looked for podcasts and books and different tools to help me. But what I found was really lacking in that space was getting to the root of clutter to begin with. A lot of it was superficial, like what room to start in, or here's a checklist, right? But I was so overwhelmed and paralyzed with things that I had 80 free printables and like a whole Pinterest board on how to declutter, but I still couldn't move the needle. And um, one day uh, after my second son was born, we were involved in a head-on collision. And my husband um, broke his neck. He broke his sternum and um, ended up needing neck surgery. And for the immediate probably six hours after that car accident, I wasn't sure if he was going to survive. And I remember thinking, I'm already struggling as a mom, as a parent, as a human being how am I going to do this? How am I going to make this work with this chronic anxiety and depression without a husband? And it was really one of those moments where I I recognized coming home from the hospital that day, I walked into my home and I truly saw it for what it was. It was a time suck. It was literally distracting me from everything important to me, taking care of my kids, showing up as the mom I wanted to show up as, being a a decent, maybe even better, you know, uh, partner to my husband. And I said, now is the time to fix this problem. I don't have more time to kick the can down the road. Like I have to be here to support my husband on his healing. I'm going to be kind of single parenting for a while over his 
almost six month recovery. And, um, that was kind of the point of no return for me. And I'm telling you what, it changed my life. Once I finally committed to the process, changed my life. And so now that's why I do what I do. (laughs) Yeah. And I love what you do. So simply put, right, you help people declutter their lives. And I think there's so many immense benefits, but I want to back up for a second because you said a couple of things that's so good, right? That a lot of people do think, I have everything to be grateful for. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't be feeling anxious. You know, I don't quite understand why I'm having all this anxiety. Like there's so much good in my life. I have so many good things going on. And that is something that so many people struggle with because it's like we just can't allow ourselves to be human, Right. right? Like, sure, you're struggling with anxiety. That's okay. You know, just because your life looks a certain way and you're happy, that doesn't mean that this emotion, you know, can't pop up. And so I'm glad that you said that because I think that's something that a lot of people can relate to. And I'm also glad that you talk about, you know, this sort of non-traditional approach to a mental health problem, which is, you know, you know all the traditional therapies, I'm sure, you know, like me, you went to therapy, you learned a lot of tools, like you said, but some of the out of the box approaches and some of the more non traditional things really do end up helping a lot. And this is something that helped me immensely too um, in my own life. So I love that, you know, this is something that you now help people with because you saw the direct, you know, immediate benefits, maybe not immediate, but, you know, the yes. immense benefits of making all these changes. So, can you talk me through like <laughs> where did you even start? <laughs> I I uh, I tell the story often cuz it's it's a regret but it's a learning experience. So um and I'm not totally not knocking this method. Uh, Marie Kondo, I mean she, her book I think was a catalyst for like, you know, decluttering. It's helped millions of people, but I think, you know, when I picked it up, at that point I had two kids under 2 and I was so inspired. I was like, yes, clutters causing all this stress in my life. And this makes so much sense. And okay, I have to tackle my entire, I'm going to tackle my entire wardrobe. So one weekend, because I worked full time, so it was a Saturday, my husband was working. So I was home alone with the kids. I had my baby strapped to me and my toddler next to me. And I was like, I'm going to tackle my wardrobe. And I spent six hours with on and off screaming kids, nursing the baby. (laughs) And I got rid of like, I don't know, three or four big black garbage bags of things. And I'm telling you, it was so stressful. And um, yes, I made progress, but I was like, that was a moment too, where I was like, I can't do this. I can't do this all the time. Like, you know, I have to do this throughout my whole house. And I was like, this isn't practical for me. And part of that was like, I think I just wanted an excuse not to move forward. But also it's like, it's not practical for, you know, a lot of people to find these huge chunks of time consistently in their schedule to make this progress. And I was like, okay, this isn't going to work. I need to, I need to figure out how to make, make it work for me. And um, so again, it was a learning experience that really impacted the way I crafted a lot of my strategies, which is just going back to habit and behavior change, which really any lifestyle is about, right? It's not about like, you know, I, I used to only declutter typically before that moment. It was like, kind of like the rage cleaning. Maybe you've heard like, (laughs) you know, like you get home and the house is a pigsty and you're like, ah, right. And then like once or twice a year, I would do this rage decluttering where it's like, I'm getting rid of everything. And I'd have these big purges once, maybe twice a year. And I'd feel so good, but then like, that's it, right? And then the clutter's building. I'm not putting habits or systems in place. I'm not continuing. I'm not working on my relationship with stuff or getting to the root. It's all very surface level. And so you, I, I guess really learning from all those different mistakes is, I mean, it was a godsend. <laughs> and so um, I, you'll see that work through a lot of the content I create for like Instagram, my podcast, my YouTube channel, and on my online programs as well. I want to tell you about something that I recently discovered and I absolutely love, Branch Basics. I'm so excited to share this with you because Branch Basics offers non-toxic cleaning products that actually work. And this is something that I can get behind because I truly believe that toxins can negatively contribute to our physical and our mental health. 
and I'm a huge fan of ditching the toxins and living as naturally as possible. Because these products are non-toxic, fragrant-free, and pure, it really makes me feel safe and at peace with what I'm using inside of our home. And I use these products on everything. <laughs> I'm talking countertops, laundry, floors, toilets, and even in the dishwasher. So if you're wanting to make the switch and toss the toxins, check out Branch Basics and use code A Healthy Push at checkout for 15% off. Or just grab the link in the show notes. I love, love that you said it's about habit and behavior change because mm-hmm. that is so much too of just anxiety, recovery, mental health recovery, mm-hmm. all of it. Like you've got to be aware of your actions and behaviors. Yes. You've got to work to change them because really like doing, you know, these – you know, binging sessions of like, I'm going to get rid of things and I'm going to organize and like, it's, you know, not practical, but also too not sustainable. And that are you really changing the underlying cause and the reason why, you know, you're having to do all these things maybe twice or three times a year. And so I am so curious, like, I know I understand like a lot of the benefits of decluttering because I've done a lot of this work myself, but like, I know you talk about it's a huge stress and anxiety reliever, but like what are some other benefits of decluttering? I did want to mention too because some people think like, oh, that's just her opinion because she noticed it stressed her out. But there's been countless studies on the correlation between mental health and clutter over the years. And actually one of the first ones I read when I started decluttering was one that was done back in 2016 by UCLA, where um, people in the study who described their homes as either cluttered or messy had um, higher levels of cortisol. And normally when we wake up in the morning or even throughout our day, like cortisol can kind of go up and down. But these people who describe their homes as cluttered or messy, their cortisol stayed high throughout the day. And when that, and that's a stress hormone. And so when that happens, when it stays high, that typically throws most people into like this low grade perpetual fight or flight, right? You probably talk a lot about that on your show, like the system designed to help us survive, right? If there's a lion or a bear behind me, I live in the mountains of North Carolina. I saw a black bear the other day, like 50 yards from me. I felt, (laughs) right, that skyrocket. My heart jumped through my throat. I was like, oh my gosh, right? Now now imagine, not quite that high, but a low-grade version of that kind of in this background, right? If you have a million tabs open in your phone, your your phone starts mm-hmm. to work slower. Your computer starts to work slower. It just starts to slow you down and it impacts you on a mental health level, you know, with depression, anxiety, stress levels, and also physiologically, right? When that when that cortisol stays high, that can impact like blood pressure, heart rate, I mean, cause acne, fatigue, weight gain, all kinds, like a whole host of other health issues. And with With clutter, I don't necessarily think for a lot of people it's like the main cause of anxiety, but it's like the nail in the coffin, right? Maybe you come home from work after a long day and the first thing you see when you walk through your front door is like a pile of random junk. You're tripping over shoes, right? There's clutter all over the counter. You have to make dinner and it's going to take 30 minutes to clear all this junk off, right? It's just – it's constant. And so – um. So there is a lot of data that drives the point of they are definitely correlated. Uh, as far as other benefits from streamlining and simplifying, um, you know, your space, you're looking at more time and more energy. Um, clutter basically tells our brains there is more work to be done. So a great analogy would be like, imagine you get to your end of your day, you had a busy long day, don't we all, every day? It seems like you you sit down, you get ready to turn on your favorite show, and now imagine like your partner or a family member walks in and goes, what are you doing? Get off the couch. You have more work to be done. There's this to do. We got to do this, 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 right? Clutter and mess do that. They speak to us, and our brains recognize that. Actually, there's uh, studies that show Even when we're sleeping, if we're sleeping in a cluttered room, our brain knows it and it impacts our quality of sleep. And so people who, um, this used to be me, have that room where you just throw everything into and shut the door and go, you know what, out of sight, out of mind. Not true. That's the bearer of bad news today in that way. Um, But gosh, I mean, increased time and energy when we have less stuff to manage, to clean, to work around, to reorganize. 
We've got more time, um, more ability to be productive and focus and be present, which is one thing, especially as a new mom, I really craved and wanted, and I still do seven years later, but clutter, right? It's that, it's that nagging voice. Like you sit down with the kids and it's like, oh, better go do this, better go do this chore. You're getting behind the, the, the piles are, the piles, piles are building. And so I had to tell my kids all the time, no, you know, I'm sorry, mommy can't play right now. And, you know, after saying that multiple times throughout the day, every single day, just so I can deal with stuff, it's pretty heartbreaking. And so it really impacted, you know, my relationship with my kids too. And so, I mean, literally you could, you could, <laughs> there's so many different varieties and benefits to decluttering that those are just a few of the, uh, you know, ways that stood out and continue to stand out for me. Yeah. Oh, I love that you shared. So that the, the- big things that resonate with me, right, are the time. Like Mm -hmm. I'm always looking for how can I get, you know, not more time in my day because you can't get more time, but like how can I create, you know, more time in my day where I'm not doing, doing, doing. And like like you said, I can't play with you because I have to go do laundry. I have to do dishes. I have to pick up, you know, all those things. Like how can I save time? And like that is so precious And, you know, I think when you realize that having less means you have less cleaning and less upkeep, that like, oh my goodness, like how much time you can gain back. And you, I think like, you know, we've all been there when we go through this process that you're like, is this really going to make that much of a difference, right? Mm -hmm. Like, Mm -hmm. is this really going to help me? But then you create these habits, right? You really change your behaviors and you create these habits and it's just like, oh my goodness, what was I doing for, you know, years? And it's the time thing and then it's also being present, right? Like, whoa, I finally have more time to be present, but also when I'm doing things and interacting, like, I'm actually here. Like I'm not thinking about all the other things that I have to do. And those two things, like I I say, of course, always, especially as a mom, like those are such big gifts that I always want to be present. I always want the time with my daughter. So it's like the benefits are just immense. And I'm glad that you hit on those two things because I think that that's really important. And two, I, I've read in one of your posts that you worded it so well that like it just gives you more headspace. Yeah. And I would love to hear what you have to say about that because I think people don't realize like the clutter and the impact that it has on you mentally with all the things that you have going on there. Yeah, definitely. I think I, and this was me too, most people realize how intricately connected we are to our environments. And when you change your environment, you know, such as surrounding yourself with different people, well, we can't always do that, right? (laughs) With our families or our coworkers, but, or, you know, even spending time in spacious, uncluttered rooms, or even like a clear work desk, right? If you're listening to this episode at work today, like your thoughts and emotions change. And I think that's a really, really powerful thing. And one thing I did want to bring up, and this was something I didn't learn until well into my declutter journey, is that people often can see, like listening to this conversation or learning about clutter, like, oh, yeah, I can see how clutter is preventing me from, you know, uh, taking time for myself at the end of the day, or it's impacting my relationships, or it's sucking my time and my headspace, all this, all these different things. But on the flip side, right, clutter is a distraction from the good things. On the flip side, it's also a distraction from like, I'll call them the bad things, but it's not always bad, like anxiety, right? Depression. And I think a big part of subconsciously why I never started to declutter was because I knew once I started to declutter, First of all, I'd have to get to the roots of my clutter. Mm -hmm. And a big part of that for me was shopping, impulse shopping. And a root to that was resentment, shame. I was unhappy. I was depressed, right? And then you have the roots of those. And I was like, oh, this – I can see where this could go. So instead of handling the roots and having this opportunity for healing and growth, I literally just – you know, continued to fill my home with clutter. So it would dist- distract me from pain, grief, all those emotions that, you know, most human beings just want to run and hide from. And so I want to offer that to your listeners who might be like, oh, that's me, right? Yeah. That's me. Yeah. Oh, that 
Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's so good. It's so good because I think – too, like I, my brain was just going to the place of like oftentimes when you're struggling with something like anxiety, you might try to also create all these distractions and kind of keep yourself constantly going, going. Like yes. if I have things to clean, if I have laundry to do, if I have all these tasks, then it kind of gives me that opportunity to not feel anxious. Right. <laughs> and it, it's funny and ironic because those are sort of the things that keep you going, that constantly keep your brain on. It's like you said, you know, you have this like cortisol that's kind of running at this even, you know, higher than what you would like level constantly because you're just keeping your brain going all the time. So yeah. that's such a good point too because I know I did that as well, but much like you, I knew – once I started to do this work, it was going to uncover more than just me like getting rid of things and not buying yeah. things impulsively. And like yeah. there were much deeper things going on and those things can be really, really hard to tackle, right? Like who, like you said, you know, you don't want to face the hard emotions. They're, they're sort of easier to just be like, mm, I'm going to cover, cover that up and clutter. pretend you're not there. Right. Right. Cover with mental clutter and physical clutter. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I love how you said, you know, impulsive shopping. Mm -hmm. Is that, so I know that there are so many reasons, right. Why people have clutter and that's a big one. I think, you know, why, why do we impulsively buy things? Like, why do we fill our homes with a bunch of stuff? Like, why do we clutter our environments? Um, well, I there are a lot of reasons. I would say definitely culture is a big thing. You know, we've been we've been consumers since we were watching Saturday morning cartoons. Do you remember when that was a thing, right? And advertisements would come on. I'd be like, mom, I have to have that toy, right? That's so cool. She'd be like, you already have one. I'd be like, but it's not pink. I have a blue one. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, we are sold this idea that in order to be happy, we need to look a certain way. We need to dress a certain way, right? This American dream. We need a big home, an expensive car. We need to keep up with the Joneses. And then add in the different pains and experiences we have in life and not learning how to, in a helpful or healthy way, cope with grief, sadness, depression, mental health issues. And so, I mean, hop on Instagram within seconds I'm in – I'm sure, you know, there's influencers out there. I follow a few of them, mostly just for research and development. <laughs> like, you know, here's a, here's a haul. I just bought like 20 new pieces from this company and it's like, oh, I'll take all those, right? And then ah, there's just, there's so many reasons. And I think it's just, again, it all serves as a distraction. And it, I think honestly, like the world just wants to put us in this trance. Like oh, so many of us, we just walk through life and we're just so unaware and unconscious of our thoughts, of what's driving our thoughts, of who who's selling us on what that day. I mean, we see, gosh, I forget the stat, but on average, it's like thousands, tens of thousands of advertisements a day incre and increase that if you spend a lot of time on social media, which most people do. Um, you know, follow the money, right? <laughs> you know, if if these platforms don't have our time, they don't get our money. And um, so I think asking different questions like, what are my thoughts? What's happening in my physical environment when I'm tempted to hop on Instagram and go check out my favorite influencer and see what she's selling that day? What's happening in my physical environment? Am I spending time at work when I typically want to impulse shop and my work desk is crazy cluttered and I'm stressed and I'm trying to avoid this project I don't want to start? Um, what's happening in my mental environment? What are different thoughts or emotions that I'm feeling when I want to tap add to cart or when I want to so desperately get out of the house and run to Target and just buy something to get that dopamine hit and that distraction. And I think very quickly you'll see a pattern and be able to identify the root and maybe roots, right? It can't, it's like a weed. It goes deeper and deeper. You can chop it off at the ground level quite quite easily for a lot of people. But right, what happens? The weed grows back the next day. And so I think there's so much value in um, embracing the journey and um, just bringing in the awareness back into your life and into different reasons why you've got clutter to begin with, including maybe shopping more than you would like to. Right. Yeah. And I, I was just thinking, you know, as you're talking to, it's not just about 
decluttering your space, right? Because I think that's a lot of what we hear in a lot of the messaging. And, you know, for me, a big part of the journey too is like taking a look at my actions and behaviors, i.e. like how much I'm spending time looking on social media and watching TV and like all these things that, you know, aren't really adding a whole lot of value and really like are things that I don't even actually want to be doing, but like I'm just doing them to try to avoid and distract and like, Mm -hmm. you know, not face things that would be, you know, we think easier not to face. So I think too, you hit on something really good and and something that, you know, really makes me cringe. And I know that, you know, the influencer space it has some perks and, you know, it makes sense, but it, it's it's so hard because I see, you know, of course, how much we're being sold to. And, you know, some people ask me sometimes, Shannon, like, you know, do you think that you'll, you'd ever have like sponsors or, you know, I never see you selling anything. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it's because I don't, you know, I'm not much of a consumer, but mm-hmm. I also don't want to be like selling you things that I – like there's not much value in this. Like, you know, why are why are you really wanting this? Like stopping to pause, like you said, and saying, you know, do I actually need this? Do I actually want this? Like, what is the intention? What is the purpose in me buying this? And I think giving yourself that time to pause and just check in, like goes a really long way because oftentimes it is just that we want that quick dopamine hit, like you said, this will make me feel good. Like Mm -hmm. this will bring me joy. Yeah. Maybe for, right. Like the time that you walk to the mailbox and go get it. And then the first couple hours that you have this thing and then you forget about it and you're like on to the next thing. (laughs) Like, What's the next thing I can buy? And another thing too, I think when we're purchasing things, it's not like, oh, it's like, yeah, she'll just say I got a new pair of shoes. We're not really buying a new pair of shoes. For a lot of us, we're buying a story. We're buying a persona. We're buying thoughts. We're buying feelings, right? Hey, if I buy these shoes and next time I'm with my friends, I'm going to wear them and they're going to be like, where'd you get those cute shoes? Like they're going to envy that. They're going to like that about me. I'm going to be cooler or, um, you know, my status will go up if people see me in these shoes or if I buy this thing. And, um, or I'll feel a certain way or I'll be closer to this idol, whoever that is for you. That doesn't always need to be spun in a bad way. Maybe your idol is some, I don't know, self-development expert. And so you read a biography about this person. You're like, oh, I want to be, I want to be like this person. So what do we do? We find out how they go about their day. We find out what actions they take, what time they wake up in the morning. What, what do they have for breakfast? What's their nighttime routine look like, Right. Anyone we uh, idolize and want to be like, that's kind of the next step, right? But I think a lot of us fall into the trap of (laughs) idolizing maybe the wrong people for the wrong reasons. And that's where you get trapped in, right? What that person values, you will learn to value, which means that's going to impact literally every decision you make throughout the day, how you spend your time, what you buy, what brands you buy, how often you buy, how much you spend a month on clothing, the next home you purchase, all those things. And so again, I think it's just about pausing, slowing down and going, do I even really want this? Or have I just somehow accidentally caught caught on to this person's values? And hey, you know, I actually don't really care. I already have two pairs of shoes. I love them. They work great. I don't really care if my friends don't like them because I like them. <laughs> and, and, and just moving on with your life and focusing on things that actually truly matter and will move the needle when it comes to your mental health, when it comes to your contentment, when it comes to your happiness. I mean, that's yeah. all I got. <laughs> uh, no, it's, Step it's, off my soapbox there. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's so good, but it is, you know, slowing down, pausing, it goes a long way in general in life with many, many things. But I think it really can prevent us from adding more things into our lives that just end up taking more mental space. They end up taking, you know, more time. They end up taking more presence away from us. Like all these things that we really actually want and would get us to the place that we want to be, where we're feeling more peaceful, where we're feeling more joyful. Mm -hmm. So it's like funny, you know, when um, I can't remember who said it and I'm not going to nail it exactly, but, you know, 
the whole idea of minimalism, right, isn't like I'm going to get rid of all my things. I'm never going to buy anything. Like I'm never going to have anything nice. It's not that, you know, for me, like when this person said, it's really about creating more of what I want in life, right? Mm -hmm. Like more peace, more freedom, more joy. And that was what really resonated with me. And that's what got me on board with this whole decluttering and minimalism. Because I was like, yes, I want more peace. Like I want to feel less anxious. I want to be happy more. Like I want all these things. And then you know, when I started making more conscious choices and really slowing down and changing behaviors, I was like, oh my Lord, like this stuff is not so hard, right? Like I am actually feeling less anxious. I am actually more present. Like it's wild. And I mean, I'm talking about it now. It still surprises me, but it's like, it's not that hard, but it is, you know, when yeah. actually yeah. you're going through yeah. it. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Yeah, you're very right. I, I I think you might be referencing Joshua Becker there. He's great. I uh, highly recommend his books. He says something like minimalism is the like conscious removal of um, you know things that aren't adding to your life so you can focus on what really matters, right? And that looks different for everyone. And that's why you know people get so caught up in the term minimalism and what it is and what it's not. And the truth is, you know, it takes on really deep personal definitions for everybody. And, you know, I'm not someone who's like, you can only have two pairs of shoes. You have to live in a tiny house. You can, I mean, some people are like, I see questions on minimalist forums, like they'll post a picture of their living room and ask everyone, they'll be like, is this minimalist enough? And I'm like, dude, you're asking the wrong question. And why does it matter what other people think? And you wouldn't believe the comments. Oh no, it's too cluttered. You need to get rid of that one photo hanging on your wall because a true minimalist would do X, Y, Z or design it. I'm just like, this is not the group for me. And so after a while, I just kind of started saying simplifying, right? Because everyone can kind of understand that term. And there's not so many invisible constructs around the word simplifying. Um, So whether it's minimalism that resonates in your version and creating your own definition or simplifying, you know, use it as a vehicle to get to where you want to go in life. And for so many people, Shannon, that's freedom, it's freedom. It's freedom from this chokehold of your time, of your headspace. Like I remember coming home after a long day's work and just being like, I have nothing left. And I have my kids who I want to pay attention to. And I also have all this clutter everywhere that's sucking my time and energy. And so freedom, you know, having more peace and having more silence and having more time to heal. There's so much freedom that comes along with it. And it really doesn't matter what avenue you take to get there. So I guess some gentleness for some people who might be listening and going, well, if I want to adopt the minimalist lifestyle, it sounds too extreme for me. It doesn't have to be that way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and what you just said, so good. Like more time to heal. It, yes. It, absolutely. A thousand yeah. percent, right? Like it gives you more time to focus on the things that will actually bring you the bigger benefits. So right now, if somebody's listening and they're like, all right, Katie, you've maybe convinced me a little bit. Like I'd like to do some decluttering, some simplifying. Maybe this minimalist life like is intriguing. I know it can be really, really hard and overwhelming, like you said. So where can somebody just start? Like what is some advice that you would give somebody if they're like, ooh, I'm interested? I think if they're already really um, have been practicing that awareness, whether it's to help heal anxiety or stress or depression or whatever it is, bringing that awareness into how you feel in your physical environment. How do you feel in your home? How, do you, how does it make you feel when you get home from work or when you maybe you spend all day there, maybe you're a stay-at-home mom or whatever that is? Like, how do you feel in different spaces in your house? How do you feel when you go into your bedroom at night to lay down? Does it make you stressed? Does it make you – right? are there piles of clothes in the corner calling your name? <laughs> um, how do you feel when you wake up? How does it feel when you open your dresser to get dressed? Are there clothes busting out of your dresser or your walk-in closet? Can you easily find what you need? Oh, there's so many different nuances to how decluttering can save you time, but bringing awareness into like what's happening in your headspace as you go throughout your day, you're like, actually, I actually took notes in my phone and I was like annoyed <laughs> for like a split second here, 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 here. And that added up to like a thousand different pin, pin pricks, right? <laughs> and okay, I can see maybe where um, 
how throughout my entire day it's bothering me. So after you bring in the awareness to the situation, I think just taking action. So many people, and this is me too, we think I just need the perfect strategy, the perfect method, the perfect guru or whatever. But honestly, it we just need to be consistent. And like I said in the beginning, it goes back to habit and behavior change. And none of that happens unless you take action, right? You can read a book, you can listen to the podcast, but if you're just like, that's great information and never take action, your life isn't going to change. And so starting small, like 10 minutes a day and starting with like a clutter hotspot, like a spot in your home that you've been passing, maybe you pass it multiple times a day and you're like, oh, that's really annoying. I've, I've been meaning to handle that, but I'm too busy, right? Spend 10 minutes going through that, putting stuff away and getting rid of the clutter, right? That's your knee-jerk reaction is this is excess. I don't need it. It's got to go. Um, and make that simple 10 minutes a day a habit. It's life-changing. And what's fun and incredibly satisfying about decluttering is that it continues to pay dividends in the long run. And so one mistake people make, though, is that they, let's just say, declutter for a week, 10 minutes a day. And then they're like, I'm kind of feeling the benefits, but then, and they're excited about it, but they lose momentum, right? Life happens. Their kid gets sick. They're whatever. They got to go travel, right? And then they come home. They they drop that habit. It happens to us all, right? We are so excited to adopt this new thing. And then let me look at New Year's resolutions, right? <laughs> Most of them are done by February 18th. Uh, or whatever date that is. And so I think just giving yourself grace, it doesn't have to be perfect and understanding that progress is never linear and sticking with it. Most people give up, like I said, before, I mean, the benefits continue to grow and before they kind of hit that threshold where they're like, oh, right, like I'm really noticing this now, like daily chores are faster and all this stuff. And so just sticking with it is a and taking action. Yeah. Consistency is so important. All right, Katie. So people want to find and connect with you further. Where can they find you and all the goodness you have to offer? Oh, come hang out with me. Definitely on the podcast, The Maximized Minimalist. And um, I love Instagram. That's my kind of platform of choice. That's um, You can find me under my full name, which is Katie Joy Wells. And then you can check out my website for any resources. I've got free downloadables. Um, hopefully you take action with those. <laughs> And they don't, you know, they're not collecting digital dust like they did for me many years ago. And then I've got a whole host of online programs that can fit different needs depending on where you are in your declutter journey and what you need to. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. It's been so great. And I know that this will be helpful to so many people. So thank you, Katie. Thanks, Shannon. And before I end this episode, I want to mention that I'd really appreciate it if you shared this episode or any others with somebody who you feel could benefit from what I share here. You sharing these episodes is what helps me to reach and support others who need it. And if you have an extra minute in your day today, I'd also really appreciate it if you could leave a rating and review over on Apple Podcasts. I read every single review and this too is what helps me to help more people to heal and overcome. I hope you enjoyed this episode of A Healthy Push. If you want more, head on over to ahealthypush.com for the show notes and lots more tips, tools, and inspiration that will support your recovery. And if you're hoping for me to cover a certain topic, be sure to join my Instagram community at A Healthy Push and let me know in the comments what you want to hear next.